Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome back to another gaming battle vid. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Steam Deck OLED and how it compares against the original Steam Deck as well as also everything else in the portable PC gaming market. Now if you join us for the very first time, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, notification icon to watch more videos like this. So the Steam Deck OLED is here. It was announced really quickly out of the blue and it's also quite refreshing to see. I have the limited edition uh, Steam Deck OLED here and it stands out from the original Steam Deck in a couple of ways. For the limited edition, you do have uh, reddish orange uh, analog sticks that you can see on either side. And then of course, uh, when it comes to the overall look, it has this kind of like see-through a clerical look to it, which is nice, kind of allowing you to see into the internals. Uh, then of course you've got uh, that reddish orange uh, highlights for the power button, as well as also for your fence, uh, both uh, the back as well as also the top of the device. You can clearly see the back of the device, even the screws also have the same color. So just uh, for the limited edition, it just stand out quite a bit. Now the Steam Deck OLED starts at uh, 549 and goes up to a bit, I believe 699 for the limited edition version. Uh, and limited edition comes uh, with one terabyte of storage, which is what I have here. So what makes it different from the original Steam Deck? Well, you might think, well, it's just because of the color and designs. There are a couple of really unique instances that make it stand out. The very first thing is the display. Now with the Steam Deck OLED, it is an OLED display instead of, of course, an LCD display. So it's clearly uh, much sharper, brighter, and richer in terms of colors. You also have something uh, where it also has a higher nit ratio of up to 1000 nits of max brightness. So it looks brighter just comparing both of them at the same time. And as you can tell, the display is also bigger without changing the display size, if you will. Uh, the original Steam Deck is 7 inches, while the Steam Deck OLED is 7.4. Uh, they reduced the bezels here to fit in a larger display, so you can clearly see that. Now, internally, there are also some changes from the Steam Deck OLED to the Steam Deck. Now, the Steam Deck OLED has a 6 nanometer chipset uh, compared to the 7 nanometer on the Steam Deck uh, regular, uh, which will bring in better power efficiency and also battery performance, according to Valve. Uh, we also have Wi-Fi 6E built in and of course the larger storage as I mentioned earlier. So that brings a lot. Now uh, with this you know, new uh, nanometer size and also new cooling as well, we also have a situation where the Steam Deck OLED is actually lighter by 30 grams and it feels much lighter when you're using it. It holds and rests pretty light in general in comparison. Now a couple of things that are similar is the fact that of course they both come with uh, cases. I did mention in my last video that the Steam Deck didn't come with a case, so I apologize for making that incorrect statement. They do come with cases uh, when you buy them. Actually, in comparison to all other devices here, the Steam Deck OLED and just the Legion Go have cases. None, none of us do have cases that come with the device. Although the Steam Deck OLED Limited Edition uh, has a unique case that kind of separates, I believe also with the regular Steam Deck OLED, uh, where you can have a smaller, thinner case to travel with that is built into it where you separate out, and that's actually pretty cool. So we've seen that there are differences here. What does that mean for performance when you're using the Steam Deck OLED in comparison to the Steam Deck and also the other devices? And these other devices I mentioned include the ROG Ally, uh, the Legion Go, and also the One X Player 2. Now, I'm just gonna talk about the specs of the One X Player 2 uh, quite briefly here because it's quite an interesting device. Uh, this is powered by a Ryzen 7 7840U processor with a 7080M uh, GPU. Now for this device though, we've got something quite unique. It does come with 32 gigabytes of RAM standard compared to the other devices that come with 16 gigabytes. And you kind of notice it in just general functionality. This is a Windows uh, device in terms of build. Now overall, it's got an 8.4 inch display, so massive touchscreen display. You've got of course your uh, thumbsticks in that split fashion like the Xbox, XYBA buttons, definitely buttons on the, on the top your triggers here and there are no buttons at the back. So there's nothing here at the back that gives you remappable buttons. But you do have a micro SD card slot, a full USB-A, USB Type-C headphone jack, a turbo button, volume rockers, as well as a power button there. 
And then at the bottom, another USB Type-C port. But the also cool thing is that this has a built-in kickstand, which is nice, uh, allowing you to place it on the table just like a Legion Go. And you also have removable um, joy cons, if you will. So you can actually remove that. And it does come, you can, you can get multiple accessories for the One X Play 2 which includes a uh, dock for those Joy-Cons. So you can have a, a standard controller, as well as also a detachable keyboard, which magnetically locks at the bottom of the device. So how about gaming performance for all these devices that we have here? So let's start off with a very simple one, uh, which is uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is available on Steam and available for all these devices. As I mentioned, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the brand new Steam Deck OLED runs at 66 frames per second on low settings compared to the Steam Deck, uh, regular Steam Deck, uh, which ran at around 40 to 50 frames per second. When we look at it compared to the other devices like the ROG Ally, it also ran at 60 frames per second, the Legion Go 60 frames per second, and the uh, One X Player 2 Pro 60 frames per second. So the Steam Deck OLED actually performs slightly better uh, with an extra six frames there in terms of performance. When we look at the next game here, which is uh, Street Fighter VI, uh, this is playable, of course, on all the devices. And we ran six, uh, Street Fighter VI and we got the same 60 frames per second on all devices. Steam Deck OLED, Steam Deck, uh, ROG Ally, the uh, One X Player, uh, 2 Pro, as well as the Legion Go. Now, the final game, of course, was Doom Eternal, where we're able to get some interesting frame rates here on the brand new Steam Deck OLED, which also has a 90 hertz display, so it's an improvement from the uh, 60 hertz. It ran at 90 uh, frames per second uh, for the Steam Deck OLED at low setting 720p. Uh, in comparison to the other devices, the ROG Ally ran at about 80 to 90 at, at uh, medium settings and then of low settings around about 100 and uh, 10, 120. The Legion Go also did similar while the One X Player 2 ran uh, higher to as well, closer to about 100, 110 frames per second. So the higher frame per second on these other devices compared to the uh, Steam Deck OLED. Now, that being said though, why, why do we have this kind of slight differences in performance when you look at a game like, say, Shadow of the Tomb Raider in comparison to something like Doom Eternal here with these devices? I think you can attribute it to some of the different things in terms of the difference with the processors where the Legion Go and the ROG Ally both are running the uh, Z1 Extreme processor, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, while the One X Player 2 Pro is running a Ryzen 7 7840U and the Steam Deck is running a uh, Ryzen APU uh, at six nanometers, not specify what that chipset. So you're gonna get slightly different uh, performance readings, but nothing too crazy here within these devices. Now, what about software? Now, the Steam Deck OLED is running, of course, SteamOS, compared to the other devices, all four other devices are running Windows operating system. This is where the Steam Deck, I think, still wins because Steam Deck OS is purposely built for these devices. So it actually is customized to just jump into the games you want to. And it's a very fluid experience. While the ROG Ally, the Legion Go, as well as also the uh, One X Player 2 Pro are all running Windows. And you have to do a lot of updates to make sure your drivers are set and things like that. They do have their own custom operating systems uh, that allow you to go in and uh, change your game settings as well as to pick your, your games. But that is just running on Windows, not actually running on the system itself. So you do have that difference there. Now, some of these devices have some really great unique features, and those features include detachable controllers and also FPS modes. Looking at the One X Player 2 Pro, this has a very unique approach in the fact that you can dock a keyboard to it magnetically, and you, know, you can also connect uh, a mouse via Bluetooth, either via a dongle on USB or USB Type-C, allowing for a first-person shooter um, uh, experience on here quite easily. Now you can do this on the ROG Ally as well as also the Legion Go, but I think that dock really helps in just cutting out this Bluetooth connectivity and latency. You can also connect it to a controller dock so you can actually use it as a controller with that kickstand built in. So that is also nice. Now the Legion Go does something different. The right controller is your FPS uh, joystick, if you will, and it's got that FPS mode 
which you can switch it to. And it gives you also fluid experience, but you do have to remap a lot of buttons to do that. So that's something to take note. And that's something at least that allows you to use that in a pinch instead of you carrying more accessories. While the ROG Ally itself doesn't have anything and is just basically relying on your dual uh, thumbsticks. So you have to bring accessories if you want to use that as well. Now in regard to temperatures, we saw some interesting temperatures with the ROG Ally as well as also the Legion Go at 105 degrees, which is actually still pretty good. Uh, both of these systems do have some really good fans for cooling and they do have, of course, different fan modes. Steam Deck OLED coming in slightly lower than the Steam Deck itself. The Steam Deck was doing about 100 degrees while the Steam Deck OLED was about 95 to 100, uh, depending on the game you played, but it was mostly at 95 degrees. Uh, and then the um, One X Player 2 Pro uh, ran in between uh, both of them at around 102 to 107. So depending on the game, uh, you do did have different temperatures. And again, this applies to the types of cooling they have as well as also the type of processors you're running here. So what about speakers? How well do the speakers sound? Especially with the fact that the One X Player 2 Pro does have Hammond Kardon speakers and all of them have some very interesting sound profiles. <laughs> I'll say for me here, the two best speakers are the One X Player 2 Pro with Harman Kardon, much louder and richer, especially if you're just listening uh, to the built-in speakers while you're gaming, uh, as well as also, also the uh, Steam Deck OLED. I think the speakers are improved from the original Steam Deck, so it's a bit louder, but I think the best speakers here are from the One X Player 2. So when we look at all these devices overall, you're gonna ask yourself the question, which one should I pick up? Now we've got varying prices all the way through. You can pick up the ASUS ROG Ally now, starting at 449 for the version without the Z1 Extreme, and goes all the way up, of course, to 699. Uh, while, of, while the uh, Steam Deck itself starts at 349, all the way to the Steam Deck OLED, which is about 699 for limited edition. Uh, the Legion Go is, is 7, 729, and then uh, the One X Player 2 Pro has a bundle package starting at 1099 that comes with that keyboard and controller, uh, as well as also with 32 gigabytes of storage here. Now, speaking of storage, you do have ways to expand storage on your own for all of these devices. The Steam Deck is also pretty easy to do that using a replacement hard drive, which you can easily do on your Steam Deck and all of the other devices. So definitely check out videos for that. I'll have links for you guys down below. But something like the Seagate hard drive, you can of course upgrade your original Steam Deck from whatever you had to about two terabytes or even things like your Legion Go and ROG Ally. These will work well with those two as well. So there are options you, that you can use for all these devices to do it yourself. And because the other devices are also Windows-based, it's easy to just reinstall Windows and get it up and running. Now, I think that my pick for the best in terms of usability will still be the Steam Deck OLED, especially because of the new improvements that make it, of course, slightly faster, better, and lighter uh, overall. It's purely a portable PC gaming handheld system, and it feels that way, being able to jump into your games when you power on and use. While the ones that are more flexible are the Windows-based ones, especially the Legion Go with the ability to use the FPS mode uh, on there and as well as also the One X Player 2 Pro. I do like the ROG Ally. I still think it is the lightest of the bunch, uh, but it doesn't have that full customability that you expect from all of them. So it's a difficult choice and I think the Steam Deck OLED is coming in to probably take that place as uh, the king of all portable PC uh, gaming devices right now. We'll have to see if there are others that come out in the future or if there is a Windows-based operating system that is geared towards gaming that allows you to jump in and play and you don't have to go through the whole 
rigmarole of uh, installing tons of Windows updates. So if you have any questions, any comments, guys, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know which you think, which device you think won this battle right here. If you think it's a Steam Deck OLED, then sure. If you think it's the ROG Ally or maybe the One X Player 2 or even the Legion Go, leave your thoughts down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy entertainment.